Hey guys, check out the 3D puff that I embroidered on this beanie. If you want to learn how to get this look, then stick around. Alright, so before we get started with what materials you're going to need, I'm going to quickly remind you guys that if you have any questions at all throughout the video, to so please leave us a comment and we will get back to you with the answer. Alright, so here are all the materials that you're going to be using for each project and I've kind of separated them by station. So here we have our centering station and you have your water soluble marker in order to mark a point in your center. And then I used my stitch out, my test stitch out to kind of make sure that the center is correct and my ruler. So I already have that centered. Now the next station we have here, we have my size C regular hoop. So you can get this done with your regular hoops. It might be easier to do it on an eight and one, but you can do it with your regular hoops and I'm gonna show you exactly how you could hoop it so that you don't lose registration and uh, you can still get your project done and it won't uh, interfere with a sewing arm. So again, I have my size C hoop, my white foam, and the reason I'm using white is because I will be embroidering white thread so I want the foam to match the color of the thread so that if there's any showing through, it won't be as noticeable. And then here we have some tape. Um, I recommend using the strongest tape that you can find. Now that is going to help with the hooping and I'll explain why in a little bit. And then I have two sheets of tearaway. Now typically for your knit fabrics, you're gonna wanna use cutaway, but for beanies, since it is a hat, you don't probably want the backing to show. So instead of using just one sheet of cutaway, try using two sheets of tearaway and that'll give you the stability that one sheet of cutaway will give you. As long as you don't have anything too complex or um, large stitch count, then you won't have any registration issues if you use, if you double up on backing when you're using your tearaway. And last, I have my cleanup station right here, and I have my scissors just for cutting any backing or anything else I need to cut. And then I have my snips for cutting the excess thread. And we'll also use this to kind of pinch the excess foam in so that it doesn't pop out over the thread. And then here I have my heat gun. It is optional, I would say. You can also use a blow dryer in its place, but the purpose of the heat is to kind of shrink the foam inside so that it doesn't pop out over the thread and that's going to give you that nice clean finished look that you want. So also with the heat, it could help with some of the puckering that you may experience with a knit thread. Now I went ahead and embroidered one before without heat and I didn't have any puckering because of this hooping method I'm going to show you. But if you do have any puckering, the heat will also kind of help iron it out. So before we start hooping, I just want to place a mark on my fabric using my water soluble pen and I want to place a right where it won't show under the stitches. It's going to be kind of an arrow to indicate where, which way I'm going, to fa I'm going to place it because I am going to turn the beanie inside out. So I want to be able to remember which way I have to put it into the machine. That way, if you do run into any issues, you won't, of course, ruin your design and have to start over again. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this inside out and you wanna make sure that you turn it with the arrow facing forward so that you know you're inserting it into the machine the right way and hooping it the right way. And now we're just gonna go straight into our hooping. Next, I'm gonna cut my backing so that it doesn't stretch out my fabric because remember this is a knit, so you wanna keep it as stable as possible and you don't want it to stretch. So I wanna cut it just enough that it doesn't stretch it out. So I'm just gonna cut it like right around here. Also remember when cutting that you still want it to be larger than the size of your hoop. So first things first, before we start, we're gonna spray some temporary adhesive spray on our backing. Make sure you're spraying it on your backing and not on your fabric. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Next, I'm going to insert my two sheets of tearaway about halfway through, I would say. And I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. Now, make sure that when you are um, 
inserting your backing that it's not stretching out the knit. That's why I cut it so close to the size of the fabric because I don't want it to stretch out and then cause puckering. And of course, remember when you're cutting your backing, then it still needs to be large enough to cover the entire area of the hoop. It's even more important with your stretchy fabrics. So now I have my two sheets of backing in and I'm going to place the bottom hoop ring inside. And of course, make sure that you are flattening out your garment on the on the stabilizer because you want it to be as stable as possible. I was just making sure that the hoop ring was covering the entire area. So loosen the ring if you have to. With these stretchy fabrics, you definitely don't want to make it tighter, make the hooping tighter than it has to be. Just make it tight enough so that it's still very stable but not too tight because that'll cause the fabric to bounce back and then pucker. So normally you guys know that in order to hoop properly, you need to hoop the fabric and the stabilizer all together. It should be covering all areas of the hoop. But for this specific project, in order to get it done with this type of hoop, then you are going to need to leave a little bit of gap so what we're going to do is use some tape to help compensate and I'm just going to place it right at the edges and this is just going to help bring more stabilization to the project and if you have a stronger tape then use a stronger tape too just make sure not to stretch it out when you are taping it down just make sure that you leave it without you know being stretched all right so we've taped everything up we have our two sheets of tearaway it's covering all areas of the hoop that's very important and now we're going to go ahead and pop it into the embroidery machine and i'm going to take my foam with me so that we can get that nice raised finished look so now as you can see here we don't have that much space around the sewing arm we have enough space, but not that much space, especially if you want to do a large horizontal design like this one. You know that the machine is going to be going back and forth. So what you want to do to get this out of the way is kind of just tuck it in this way. And then that way you can embroider and you won't worry about embroidering on the other side or the machine or this shifting and you losing registration. All right, so I have centered my design off camera and now I'm about to press start but I wanted to point out that you should probably lower the speed of your machine just a little bit because we are going to be using the foam and it is a knit so you want to make sure that you have stability and more speed will of course cause you to have less stability so lower down to I would say probably half of your machine's maximum speed so it really just depends on what your machine's maximum speed is for us, we're going at 600. Next, I'm going to place my phone over the area of the design. And I'm going to press start in just a few. Now, this is optional, but if you want, you can kind of tape down the foam so that it doesn't move around. Usually, after a couple of stitches, your machine will lock it down with the stitches. But if you want just a little bit extra, make sure that it doesn't move around, then you can tape it down as well. One last thing before we start, I just wanted to remind you guys that the size of the foam should be slightly larger than the size of your design. It should have enough space to compensate for the needle penetrating through because once the needle starts stitching through, it's going to start kind of um, pulling in so it might shrink a little bit. All right, so now I am all ready to go, and I'm just going to go ahead and press start. All right, 
right guys so i'm back here at my cleanup station and again i have my heat gun my snips and my scissors and i'm going to start by just removing the foam and it's very simple you can just tear it away and then of course tear the tape off And because I'm using tear away, I can just tear away gracefully <laughs> my backing. All right, so now I'm just cutting up any of the excess thread. One thing I forgot to mention is that if you have any areas where your water soluble pen marks are showing, to get rid of that now. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of water off camera. I have my damp towel and I'm just going to use it to get into any of the areas where the blue from the pen might be poking out. A lot of people also like to use chalk instead of your water soluble pen because they don't want any of the blue showing maybe later when the, the client washes their clothing just in case. So you can do that as well. All right, next up I'm going to take my snips and I'm just going to kind of push in any of the little parts of the foam, but very carefully because you don't want to pull on the threads. Just a little bit and the heat gun will basically take care of the rest. Try to get as much foam out with your thread, with your snips carefully before going in with the heat because remember the heat can burn the thread if you apply it for too long. So you want to kind of try to make sure you get as much out before you go in with heat. So I have my heat gun and I'm going to do the final honors. So I'm putting it at its lowest heat setting, which would be right in the center. And I'm just going to All right, so now we're going to turn our NMIA beanie back inside out. And thanks to the arrows, we're not going to run into any surprises when we fold it over. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button below. And of course, to subscribe to our channel. And I also want to invite you guys to join our Facebook group, Embroidery and Custom Apparel. In it, you can ask questions and share knowledge with us and other embroiderers. And of course, I included the link to the group in the description below. So go ahead and join. See you there. Me. If you want to, if you want to stick around, me. If you rather me talk like this from my good side, click thumbs up. Wait, is it my good side? I want to check. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you know, you know my. So you. Know. <laughs>